Welcome to Freeze Your Milk Podcast. I'm your host, Bridget, along with my husband, Chris. Podcast where we talk about the comedic side and serious side of parenting, life, and relationships. We are boy parents. Um, we have two boys, Enzo and Rhett, with about a six year age gap between the two. You can check out our website, freezermilk.com. Also, feel free to follow us on Instagram at Freezer Milk Podcast. Thanks and hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. Happy uh, Wednesday Eve or Tuesday, Tuesday Eve. Eve. Wednesday light. Wednesday. Tuesday light. No. Welcome to our show. <laughs> it's going to be Wednesday when you all hear it. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like the last week was like the longest week ever. Like I was thinking about the fact that it, like Monday of last week was Halloween. Mm-hmm. It seems like the longest, it seemed like like weeks ago. Yeah. I think it was because Rhett ended up being sick and then his nanny got sick from him. Yeah, so we had him extra, you know, extra days, were, while, like, try- while, days. while trying to work, which was... Which is almost impossible. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It was a lot. But it just seemed... It made for a very... Like... I was thinking about it when she came back on Monday. And I was so excited she was back. And healthy and feeling better. And I was thinking about it. I'm like... Man. It seems like it was forever ago. Right. So... So much time has passed. (laughs) Now we're overworking her. Yeah. Well, you have some stuff going on this week with work. That we have to get some extra hours. Yeah. You got some exciting stuff, though. You got to be able to, you got to spend some money that wasn't our money, <laughs> so that was nice. Oh, for baby stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my work was super sweet, and they got me a gift card for the baby, and we were able to buy a lot of like the little items that we needed, as far as like starter diapers and wipes, and a changing pad, and lots of odds and ends, and pacifiers, and. A diaper caddy because his nursery is on the opposite end of the house. I'm because like, this is all stuff we can not live without. <laughs> Seriously. It's stuff that's helpful. Yeah. Makes life easier. What else did you get? Big ticket item. Ooh, our double stroller arrived. Yeah. So we love Mockingbird strollers. Um, so shout out to Mockingbird. Maybe we'll get sponsored one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But we love Mockingbird strollers. They compete with like Up a Baby and a couple of the other bigger brands. But their strollers are amazing. So we originally bought a Mockingbird for Rhett and it was the single stroller. At the time, they didn't offer the single to double stroller. So with this baby, we're like, crap, we need to have a double stroller. And our Mockingbird doesn't convert. And we've literally had it like 18 months. So I called Mockingbird because the double stroller is like 450 bucks and then you have to buy the second seat kit for it because it converts from a single to a double so to do the conversion with like an extra hundred and forty five dollars so you're in it like 600 plus which is pretty on par for double strollers unfortunately but i called them and said hey like this is our original order uh, that we did and they said oh we have a growing family program i said well what's that and they told me that If they could see my original order of the single stroller, which they could, then they would go ahead and give us a credit towards the single to double. So they said that they would give us like $145 off as part of their like growing family program um, because they can confirm that we had the single stroller and we needed to upgrade to the single to double the second seat kit, which I thought was amazing. They weren't asking me to send it back. They just said, hey, ideally pass the stroller on to somebody else. If you can, and, you know, let them use it. Which is probably what we'll end up doing, because now we have 25 strollers sitting in my garage. (laughs) But I thought that was so cool. So we literally got the second seat kit for free, and then um, we got the stroller. Your mom bought it as our gift for the new baby, the double stroller. And that arrived, which was so exciting. Mm -hmm. And you got to put it together and got to test out the double double (laughs) seat and how that thing is going to set up. That thing's massive, by the way. But it's a beautiful stroller. It is. It's interesting, like, when I go places, like, <clears throat> every once in a while, like, if I'm by myself or I'm with the baby, I'll snap a pic and send it to Bridget, basically, like, pointing out, oh, hey, that's a, that's a such and such stroller. And, like, now, like, that I've been, like, around it and I'm actually a dad, um, I'm starting to, like, know this, the, know, the names of some of this stuff now, and I, like, point this stuff out, and it's kind of funny, but. <laughs> stuff you never thought you'd know. Yeah. 
brand names of strollers. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, they have a mockingbird like us. Or, oh, that's the nice car seat. It's the Nuna. Yep. That's so funny. <laughs> so the the stroller, the double stroller, you got to pick the color for it. Yeah. And then the infant car seat, we're reusing the one we had for Rat, and it's like a creamy white. Yeah. You want to talk about what color the stroller is? Yeah, the stroller itself is like a blue-green. Sage. Or sage color. Um, and it was funny because she was putting it together and she, we were putting it together in the kitchen in our house. And, um, what, before, when we moved in, we had, uh, the cabinets here used to be like a, a mocha or they were like a dark black, they were like a darker color. Yeah. So it was did, called an espresso, but it looked black. Yeah. So we ended up painting them cause we hated the color. We hated what it did. Um, <clears throat> so we got the stroller put together in the kitchen and we just realized that, it is the matching identical colors to the upper and lowers of our cabinets. <laughs> so, like, the sage is the same color as our lower cabinet, and that's where, like, Rhett will sit in the lower seat. And then the upper seat, because it's a, it's a vertical stack more of, instead of side-by-side, side, it's a front back with one high, one low. And so the upper seat will be the newborn. And that one's the creamy, and our upper cabinets are oyster white. <laughs> I looked at it and looked at the cabinets, and I was like, oh... <laughs> I wonder where that came from. We like what we like. <laughs> but you got some cool stuff. You got to order some cool stuff. You had a you had another meltdown. Yeah. This last weekend. We decided we need to start doing like a, a mind dump for me. Yeah, I think it's more like, like it's not when you're not pregnant, but when you're pregnant, your mind's not there. And yeah. you are just so foggy, you forget things. And it's, everything seems a little bit more overwhelming, I think, <clears throat> when you're it sucks because you'll think of something and be like, oh, I need to do this or, oh, I need to remember this. And then 10 minutes later, it is so far out of your head and mind that you don't even, it's not even on your radar. And then days later, it comes back and you're like, crap, I thought about that the other day. Why didn't I remember? And so it's so frustrating. It's like watching a light like zoom by you and you're like, but it, it was, it, no, it's gone. Oh, there's back. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's gone again. Like, it's so frustrating. <laughs> and then, you know, that's just one item. You add multiple items in about, oh, I need to schedule this, and we need to get a dentist appointment for this kid, and we need to send an email to school about this, and then we need to schedule a house inspection. We need to, you know, plan for this and figure out that. And, like, it's just a lot when your brain can't seem to remember any of it for more than two minutes. Yeah. So you had a meltdown. I did. Again. I did. Second meltdown in like two weeks. <laughs> I was crying. I'm like, I'm such I a it, mess. I think I'm just going to set aside time on Sundays, like just an hour for, and I'm going to put it in my calendar for, it's just going to be labeled as Bridget's meltdown. <laughs> just so we can go through and you can brain dump. brain dump everything that is on your mind and things that need to be done so I can get them together and take care of them in 25 minutes. The sad part is right now, even though we just brain dumped, I couldn't tell you what's on the list. Isn't that sad? We did a lot of it. I know, but just I couldn't tell you. Po- mostly like appointments. My and... brain just, nope. Doesn't remember it. I don't even know where the list is. You gotta keep track of it. It's in your office. I do know that. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, I, I don't even remember how it started, but I just started crying. I was like, just... I just have so much in my head. And I'm such a mess. And I can't remember any of it. And I feel like a failure. So we put your Christmas tree up. That wasn't even on the list, but it made you feel better. I did. You do you understand the logic behind it. Let no, me no, explain, explain it. it. So we understand it's the first week of November, and this is very early for us to put up a Christmas tree. But my brain has always been centered around like this baby is due in December, like middle of December, and the baby will be born at latest. First week of January. So this baby will arrive when the Christmas tree is up. And so it's like this weird mental thing where I was like, we need to put the Christmas tree up so the baby knows baby can arrive. And like my brain and body will get into like baby is arriving. So like maybe we'll go into labor early and not have this baby at 42 weeks. Right. (laughs) Because I like to be pregnant forever. (laughs) So we spent some of Sunday putting the Christmas tree up. I think that helped you though. It did. I, we didn't decorate. We just had the lights on it, which, like, I personally love the tree, just the lights. I'm such a big fan of it. Yeah. 
It's so, it's so pretty. But so we have, we have a Christmas tree up in the our, our fireplace mantle right next to the Christmas tree. We have pumpkins. Because we still have our fall stuff out. And like Thanksgiving stuff. <laughs> Just all the holidays. We got it covered. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Rhett's been, I feel like his personality is coming out more and more this week. Yeah, he's he's evolving every day. It's crazy. I keep sending you uh, Instagram videos or reels of the first and, what the first and ch second child they're going to be. Yep. And they are hilarious because it's so spot on. <laughs> the, my favorite one is the one, because it's so true, that they're like, Oh, you think you're great parents because your child, your first child's so well behaved, and you think you're, you know, you're crushing this parenting thing. Then your second child comes along, and you realize it's not your parenting; yeah. <laughs> it's just the kid. Uh, there was one. There was a. There was a reel that I sent you that uh, it was like a. It was the first and second child. There was the second child in the ocean with some floaties getting knocked over by waves and having a good old time, and then it was the first child. Um, and the first child was running from the water, and it was, and the the the, the saying was, uh, I, think uh, I think I'm allergic uh, to, to water. To water. <laughs> it kept running. It was funny. You gotta, I don't know. You just gotta kind of. Enjoy if you've listened water. to our previous episodes, you know that uh, Enzo does not enjoy the beach because of the sand bugs. Yeah, he's he's sheltered. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it makes me laugh though. We're trying to give him new experiences so he gets out of his shell a little bit more, I think. I think it's just, it's hard when he's kind of scared of everything, so. Yeah, I would agree. But we are, we did decide that we were going to try and get him a bike for Christmas, so we'll see how that goes. Whew, it's going to be interesting. We'll start with the training wheels, or should we just forgo training wheels and like, say, go for it and. <laughs> then we're going to have to wrap them in bubble wrap. Well, I feel like training wheels are like good and bad. Like they kind of teach, like they help you understand steering and pedaling on a bike, but they also give you like such a false sense of security. Yeah, but it's also the most important part is the steering and the pedaling. <laughs> so that's the only way you stay up. Right I live in Arizona. There's no hills. <laughs> we'll just go push them down in one of our grass areas and just <laughs> right. have fun. So yeah, so he wants to get a bike, and have you teach him how to ride it. Should be interesting. Yeah, we'll see. He has a scooter out there and never rides. I know. That's why I'm like, I... It's hard to justify it. <laughs> just one more thing that clutters my garage. <laughs> right. But, like, he asked you yeah. instead of his dad, so... Yeah. Speaking so. of... <laughs> so his dad decided they're not going to move out of out of state. Right. Which we, we thought might happen. So, we don't have to worry about stressing out about trying to figure out, like, the dual parenting plan out of state, etc. Yeah, because originally he was maybe thinking about doing it with his wife, but I guess they decided against that, and we were concerned because we would have to do, you know, split. Like, if you moved out of state, we were probably going to do, like, month on, month off, but that gets expensive, so we were probably looking at, you know, summers and school year kind of thing. Yeah, um, which so. we don't love that idea because, like, and keeps so, him away from his siblings. Yeah, too. it just keeps him away from his brothers a lot. Yeah. It's tough. So, anyway, it's something we don't have to stress over anymore. Yay, you know. at least for another year. At least for another year. Although, I don't know, he changes his mind quite frequently, so you never know. This is true. But. Enzo's asking me this morning about marriage and divorce. And asking, like, if you and I were ever going to get married on paper. Because we... Are not married on paper. Yeah. So we had a big long conversation about marriage and divorce and how people's heart hurts a lot with divorce and, you know, how marriage can be different for everybody. Um, like each person can be a little bit different as far as like the piece of paper or not the piece of paper and... Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I feel like it was a good conversation. It was interesting to have the conversation and realize, like, he's seven, but some of the stuff he thinks about, it's just interesting. Yeah, pays attention. He does. He does. <laughs> we, uh, we got a package at our P.O. box this week. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, Bridget's mom has been trying to contact us via email and trying to... 
you know, pry information out of us, whether it be photos of her, the kids or our home address. Um, but she's really, she doesn't just come out and ask for our home address. She comes out. She and did once. We said no. Yeah, we said we wouldn't give it to her. So she said she finally comes up and says, I have a box of your baby pictures. And pictures from your childhood. And pictures from your childhood um, that I want to send to you. So we gave them our business address, which is a P.O. box. Um, which she didn't respond to. and for like couple, a month. Yeah, for a month. Finally reaches back out and says, hey, I sent the pictures. Let me know that you got them. So we get these pictures, and, you know, I go pick them up from my, my box, and uh, <laughs> she, Bridget opens them up and starts going through them, and it's the same photos every year. So more or less, there's a bunch of photos missing that we know. Because Bridget had other experiences that there were photos of, and they're not in there. <laughs> so she basically just gave her the photos that she wanted to give her, and they're photos of her and her sister in front of a Christmas tree, and both of them look miserable. So that's the the annual Christmas tree photo of Christmas morning every year, and I think we've talked. I think we've talked about why like Christmas is not great. I don't know if we have, but. Long story short, growing up for me, like Christmas was not a fun thing because of the fact that my parents every year would ask my sister and I to write a Christmas list and then would proceed to buy us absolutely nothing on our Christmas list. And so when my sister and I got old enough to actually be able to like read each other's lists, we would always have to buy each other one present too. So we always made sure to buy each other one present off the list. But like 90% of our Christmas was just junk. Like... Here's a stuffed animal. Here's another stuffed animal. Here's a random, you know, sand set that you don't want and have never talked about. But I got it at Goodwill for a dollar, so here you go. Like, it was just terrible. Like, terrible. Like, it just absolutely made us feel like... Not heard? Not heard. No thought. So, like, we we kind of hated Christmas because it was a day full of disappointment. And it then sucked because all of our friends and, you know... Family would, you know, call each other to wish each other Merry Christmas. And then you talk about, like, oh, what'd you get? And all of our friends and family would be telling about these amazing things they got. And we're like... (laughs) What did she get you the last Christmas that we went out there? Foot cream? A tub of foot cream or something? (laughs) I don't even know. It was like... She must have got it from, like, a nail salon. Because it was, like, a two-year supply. And it was probably used. (laughs) Of foot cream. (laughs) I'm like, why, why, why do I, why do I need this? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't understand. She kept buying us Tervises. We had. Probably, she didn't buy them new though. She got no, them. No, she, with... she always got them from Goodwill. Yeah. But she bought us. We had like thirty. Thirty freaking Tervises. I'm like, I don't need these. Yeah. Like, why do you keep sending me these? Because we said we enjoyed them the first time she gave them to us. Like, oh, wow, thank you. These are so nice. I enjoyed the one she got me because at the time I had a Ford truck and it was a Ford Tervis. I was like, oh, this is nice. Yep. You know, it's kind of thoughtful. You, so you, you fucked up because you said it was nice. Ah, uh, fuck. So, yeah, le- learn my lesson. <laughs> Here's a tub of foot cream. But, yeah, so you saw these pictures and you start looking at the Christmas ones and you're like, you and your sister look so unhappy. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. I'm like, this is terrible. It was so bad. What were some of the other pictures? Oh, we had, there was pictures from every birthday. Yep. So you got to see all the ugly ass cakes. Yeah, but you said, you had said that you had gone on tons of family trips. Like you went to like Africa and you went, you said you went to England. We went to England. Um, There's zero pictures from England. My parents took us to the Atlanta 1996 Olympics and like, there's zero pitch. Like, my sister and I got to wear a gold medal because she was in a synchronized swimming, which is very, like, pocket sport, and they all know each other. And her coach knew the synchronized swimming team, so we got to go to their after party when they won gold medal for the team. And my sister and I got to try on a gold medal, and there is a picture that exists. Not in that box. Not in that box. Nope. There's 25 just, fucking photos of you in just, front of a Christmas just, tree. Just the pictures of you in front of a Christmas tree with your sister in dorky-ass clothes with presents you didn't want. And the first day of school. I didn't even show you the first day of school ones. You want to talk about miserable face? Oh. I'm like, how rude. Like, oh, you kept all the good ones and just gave me the ones that you made us take every year? No, it is it is exactly her intent. Of I'm going to give you just a tiny bit, but then disappoint you. So that you'll hopefully reach out and ask about the other ones I didn't send. Yeah. 
That's ridiculous. <laughs> Jesus. Well, like, here's yeah. pictures of your field trips growing up that you went to the different forts in Maryland. Okay. Don't care about these military forts from, like, Civil War. Good to go. <laughs> Where's the pictures that I actually fucking care about? Well, she knows you didn't care about them. That's why she held on to them. Yeah. What else did I get sent? Oh, I got sent my, uh, my growth. Height chart? My height, my CDC height weight chart from when I was a baby. 20, 30 years ago? 35 years ago. 35 years ago? Yeah. What do I need those for? Thanks. I was like, okay, thank you. Anyway. And I wasn't, see, like, I, school, like. School, the professional school photos. I was disappointed, so now I understand how you feel on Christmas. <laughs> I'm like, man, this is awful. <laughs> There's nothing good in here. This is not any of what I was hoping for. Welcome to my Christmas growing up. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was such a bummer. I think, like, I was thinking even about, like, our, like, stockings and stuff growing up. We we got a bunch of, like, dollar store, like, finger games to play and not, like, and exciting. Yeah. Like, it was a novel concept to me. It was not until my 20s that I, I don't even remember who it was that first did it, but I, I had some people in my life and they're like, oh, yeah, for stocking stuffers, we do, like, scratchers, like, lotto scratchers. And I was like... That's fucking genius. Hmm? Like, everybody enjoys the excitement of that. Because, like, you yeah, might get yeah, something, you, get you might get nothing. Ones, yeah. You just yeah. get the $5, $2. Yeah. We used to do that, too. Never saw that before in my life. I was like, this is amazing. Hmm? Why didn't... This is so fun. Everybody loves money. I mean, Right. Fun. Right. Or, like, we did Starbucks gift card. Like, something. Just yeah, something. Just, yeah, not a little finger game to... Here's a notepad and a pencil. The fuck am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> Write how much I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Write all my sorrows. The items I didn't get from my Christmas list. Yeah. Yeah, needless to say, we try to make our kids' Christmases a little bit better. Yeah. But... And it's not even necessarily about, like, spoiling them rotten with no. gifts. But no. trying to pay attention to stuff they say that they would want. Or things that they paid attention to what they enjoy. and. Because we're not very big on buying them shit during the year. No. Like, we don't go out and just... You know, if the family buys... Every once in a while, the family... Will, or sometimes our family members will buy stuff and send it or whatever. But we don't... <clears throat> we don't typically, like... If we're at Target, I don't buy my kids a freaking toy. Mm -mm. You know? So... Yeah, so that was a typical disappointing result of my parents' efforts. <laughs> Man. <clears throat> my parents always did pretty good. I mean, they were, they would listen to what we wanted. But I think they did that more so that it was kind of like hush presents. Like, hey, this will keep you occupied for a while. Don't bother me <laughs> kind of thing. So, <laughs> but we still got some stuff that we enjoyed. It was interesting because when you and I first started dating, we had to kind of work through... Like, Christmas. you understanding, like, Christmas was a very weird time of year for me, and it's a very weird day for me, and all more reason why this baby's probably going to show up on Christmas to try to change my mind about the day. No, well, I mean, when we do just our days, like, last year we did a whole family thing, which we probably... It was too I much. I worked. It was too much. It was just... It was... We had read it, and it was just not baby-proofed, and it was... I don't know. It was exhausting. So, yeah. this year, both holidays, we're staying, we're staying home. All, actually, all three holidays, four holidays, we're staying home. We're not doing anything. We're going to make it very simple <clears throat> um, so we don't have to worry about it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. But, I don't know. It was interesting. We were talking... Well, I was talking this week with a coworker about... Because um, they have a new baby. And talking about our podcast a little bit and started talking about the new baby. And this coworker started telling me about just asking a little bit about, you know, like emotions after birth and hormones and not feeling like themselves, etc. So we got into a really good discussion about postpartum depression. And I feel like it was really... It was really cool to be able to talk with somebody and kind of share and explain like, hey, like we have a whole episode where we talked about like my, how close I was to postpartum depression after Rhett and, you know, things that, things that you did that helped out a ton. And one of the things that I always tell people that I love that you did is you took it upon yourself to call our midwives and say, hey, like I, I have concerns. Like, Bridget doesn't seem herself. She's really down. She, like, you talked it through with them instead of 
kind of just sticking your head in the sand and being like, well, she's just going through it and she'll figure it out on her own. Well, if you think about it, like we started this podcast while you were kind of going through that. And I think it was, well, it was right after, just that we were still going through the issues, but we were. It was, yeah, because we started when Rhett was like eight, nine months old. Yeah. But you were still, I mean, you struggled for yeah. probably a good six months. Yeah. So. It was, it was interesting though to like. You know, and I could go through it again. Mm-hmm. With this, like you just never know. Hormones are. I think we have crazy. a little bit different support system now. We didn't mm-hmm. the support system. We didn't we didn't have a support system the last mm-hmm. go around, and now it's a little bit different. And I was actually talking to our nanny about it today. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I was talking about the postpartum and the things we went through and his stomach stuff, and <clears throat> and I was like, you know, the 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 real game changer for us this this go around is we. We've been through it, A, and B, we have so much more support with you and, you know, our doula. And, you you're know, like, you're our support, I so said, don't go anywhere. I said, I said you, you're, you know, huge in this for us. Like, we, we need that, at, you know. So, it was good. You know, it was good. And I, she, she was excited. She's all excited because she's, I think she's ready for another little one. But She's so excited for newborn snuggles. Mm-hmm. She was telling me today, she was like, we probably need to pack Rhett a go bag that's here she, soon. She goes, she goes, that's what she said. She goes, we need to get Rhett uh, a go bag. And then I'm like, yeah, if you want, you want to start putting some stuff together. She's like, um, should I go to the grocery store and get Rhett some food? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Go there and just, you know, send me the receipt and I'll sell you or whatever. I was like, if you want to have, she's like, I just want to have the food ready at my house, yeah. you know? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> I was telling her, I was like, we need to drop off the pack and play to her house one of these days. And like go see her house and you know take red over and get him a little bit accustomed to it yeah but also drop off and like set up a pack and play for her so that she has that because the the plan is when we go into labor if it's middle of the night like she's gonna come over here and like you know wake up middle of the night drive over here and then crash on the guest bedroom yeah. bed until Rhett wakes up and then pack him up and take him to her house but if it's during the daytime and it goes into nighttime like she needs to be able to put red down for bed yeah or a nap, so I was like, "Yeah, we need to get the pack and play over there." No, I just think it's funny because, like, today she was looking for projects while Rhett was sleeping because he had a pretty long nap. Yeah. So she's always looking for. She goes, "She goes, is this a is this a like a diaper caddy over? Because you bought this diaper caddy." She knew what it was. Yeah, she's Dang. like, "She goes, is this a diaper caddy?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's what this is." And she's like, "Do you want me to like put it together?" And I'm like. Yeah, if you want to, <laughs> she's she's just looking for stuff to do. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah go for it." <laughs> And uh, she was, I don't know, she was always just like, um, she wanted to set, help set up uh, the, 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 baby, nursery. the nursery, and I'm like. She's so excited. Yeah. Oh, so. we got the newborn diapers in today. Did you look at them? Yeah, they're teeny tiny. They're so tiny. Like, you forget, because Rhett's in what, like size five now? You forget how small they are. So they're so small. It's so crazy. Like you look at them in comparison <laughs> to these size fives. <laughs> oh. Pregnancy. Yeah. But they're so tiny. Like I love it. Like I saw them when I like got them out of the box when they arrived today, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a baby this small. <laughs> When it only lasts for two months. I if that then newborns don't last very long. But all my babies wear them originally when they first get born because they fit them for a couple weeks. So that's always good to have. You just don't want to buy like boxes and boxes and boxes of newborn stuff. Yeah, makes sense. She's so excited though. I think she's just so like so stoked. Everybody loves baby snuggles and newborns. Like they smell good. They snuggle. I think she, she's just, and she was asking like what we were doing for like Thanksgiving. And I think, I think she was kind of like, you know, leaning it like, maybe, you know, maybe I can, if I'm, I don't know what she's doing. She's going to her daughter's, her yeah. daughter's house. I, I was thinking about extending an invitation because I told her we weren't, I mean, I wasn't planning on cooking an entire meal. We were just going to do yeah. like. No, I think whatever. I asked her the other day because I was going to extend one too. And she's planning on going to her daughter's because they're hosting this year. Her daughter is. Makes sense. So. I was like, yeah, we're gonna make it as simple as possible and just hang out and enjoy it because we can't really travel with you and yeah. So <laughs> pregnancy. So I feel like this pregnancy we were talking about the other day. Um, currently, my weight gain has not been what it was with Rhett's pregnancy. Could change. I could definitely like balloon up at the end. But you were saying like, and I was saying like, we forget sometimes how far along I am or how pregnant I am because. I'm not as big as I was at this point with Rhett. Yeah. I remember curb walking when, back in the day in the East Mark. Yeah. Give you me were, a couple more were weeks. huge. Yeah. 
Give me a couple more weeks. We'll start curb walking again. Yeah. Um, not that we have curbs out here, you know. They don't exist apparently in Arizona. They're only stupid mm. rounded. I I know know when you're like just about ready because you start getting a weird walk. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then I remember sitting on the couch and the bubble up on the stomach that you had. I was like, holy shit, that looks like that looks. It doesn't look right. You yeah. Know? And then next thing you know, you're in labor. The next you know, day we were. Yeah. yeah. I was like, and you, we've got a photo of it, and it looks crazy. It I'm does. Like, yeah. My uterus was like doing stuff. It was weird. Mm -hmm. Um, but. <laughs> What happened? I was getting mail the other day. The other day? Yeah, remember? And you were like laughing at the people that drove by. Oh, uh, there's, yeah, so we have a bunch of construction going on in the neighborhood because it's a newer development. And Bridget is, like, I had, she had to get out to get the mail because she really wanted the mail. And she wears, you know, leggings. leggings. Yeah, yeah, leggings. But, and I don't look pregnant from the backside. No, no, but, um, I Let's just say she, she's she's <laughs> testing the tensile strength of these leggings being pregnant, and so she was dry or she was getting the mail out, and there was a couple gentlemen, one of the contractors, or whatever, driving in a truck, and she like bent over to pick something up because I dropped one, and it, she dropped something on the ground, and when she does that, if anybody's ever seen these leggings, it they go pretty much transparent, <laughs> and you can see right through them, and you can see the the two guys in the truck driving past just like. <laughs> Just completely eyes locked. And and she just stands up and turns around and those guys are like, nope. <laughs> oh, she's pregnant, pregnant. <laughs> Couldn't tell that from the other view. So it was hilarious. It was funny. Yeah, my pregnancy attire is on. I took Enzo to school today. And I walk out of the house in like comfy like pajama pants and like a sweatshirt and my hair a mess and I'm carrying the baby. And our neighbor walks by. Hi, gorgeous lady. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I was like, counting down the days. <laughs> I was like, of all the days, I just decided to walk out in like pajama bottoms and like I'm like. It is all of all the days because you don't typically go. I no, do, so. yeah, in the mornings I don't go, and I definitely don't wear Valentine's pajama bottoms and a multicolored sweatshirt that Enzo got me <laughs> for birthday or Christmas. It was funny though. I was just like, oh. Uh. I'm that neighbor. <laughs> they all know me as that yeah, neighbor you're, now. You're completely different when you're pregnant because, I mean, you just... I stop giving. You, yeah, you, you don't give a shit. No. <laughs> you just had a point in, like, pregnancy clothes are so expensive. Yeah. And you hit a point where you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to buy more pregnancy clothes. Like, they're not... It's And especially because, like, we play on this being our last baby, you know, in theory. We're making all the precautions necessary. So I'm like, I don't want to buy pregnancy clothes because they're expensive and I'm not going to use them again. Yeah. And I don't want to rent them because they're expensive. So I'm like, you know, I will deal with what I have and then I'll wear like pajama bottoms. Wait or... a second, you can rent pregnancy clothes? Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. They're slightly cheaper than buying, but not by much. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, you can rent any type of clothes. It's amazing. Yeah. The markets, man. Just they capitalize on, every, on everything. Me <laughs> too. But yeah, so I definitely have pregnancy, especially towards the end. I'm just wearing... Oh, you need paternity clothes? We'll rent them to you. <laughs> I'm starting a new business. <laughs> but yeah, so I felt great today with, uh, between getting my ass checked out by contractors the other day and laughing about it. And then today having a neighbor see me in pajamas. <laughs> Looking all sorts of train wreck. Looking all sorts of. She woke up and didn't have coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Girl likes her coffee. What can I say? Uh -huh. I feel you. That's becoming more and more of a uh, like a you know, necessary item in the mornings for me. I like I used to be able to go without it. Coffee, not anymore. I like I can't do anything. I can't function if I don't have a cup of coffee. I'm so curious if it is like if you ever. Got decaf and you didn't know it was decaf. Like, is it a placebo? Is it the taste or is it the actual caffeine? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Because I think about that sometimes. I'm like, I don't think it's the actual caffeine. I think my body just associates the taste of coffee means it's the like, only start soothing, functioning. It's the only soothing thing I have in the morning. Most <laughs> of the time, I wake up to a screaming child 
on a monitor. He's not screaming. F- it's pitch black. It's 5 a.m. I don't want to get up. All right, let's let's reel in reality here. He has been sleeping in until 5.30 or 6 or even 6.30. Yeah, well, I get And he doesn't scream normally. No, you're right. He sits there and yells, Dada, 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 <laughs> Dada. And then I don't hear it, so you smack me in the face. <laughs> um, yeah, so coffee's my go-to. I tried to let you go back to sleep I'm today. Like, this won't hurt me. <laughs> That's why, you know, when I hug my coffee in the morning, I'm like, <laughs> sitting there rocking back and forth like. I tried to, I tried to let you go back to bed today because I could not go back to sleep. I didn't go back to sleep. Yeah. I couldn't fall back to sleep. Gave me the option so you at least got to like go relax for a little bit. I don't know. The pregnancy thing's just uh, more kids out of, you know, keep them coming. Here we go. <laughs> we were watching a video earlier about like the two under two and like as they get older and. It's going to be chaos. Mm. We know that. Yeah. We're kind of okay with it. Yeah. It eventually will not be chaos. Although I, I regret buying nice stuff. Like the couch. Why? Because they're going to destroy it. We got protections on it. Yeah, for how long? I don't know. Years. <laughs> anyway. Well, we appreciate it, guys. We're She looks like she's going to pass out on a stool. And <laughs> I'm tired. We're tired. So we appreciate you listening every week and following us and... Going through this crazy life with us. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody for listening. You can check us out at freezermilk.com or Instagram. Freezer Milk Podcast. Until next week, guys. Thanks. Don't forget parenting is a trip. We are all here on the journey with you together. Thanks so much for listening.